let's talk about evaluation. Topical assessment is our best diagnostic tool. What are we looking at? Initially, your Dupuytren's patient may present with some simple nodules or lumps, which you can see clearly in the photo displayed. The first stage of nodules does not guarantee that your patient will progress, and Dr. Eaton does review that later in the course. What about skin pits? These are little indentions that occur in the skin, and you can see that as well. The little dimples and skin pits show up clearly on the patient in the early stages. Now when you most likely will see the patient coming in for assessments by you as the therapist or as the physician for surgical intervention or some type of intervention is once the patient's normal bands become pathological cords. This is when we'll have to consider what options there are for the client. So you can see these clearly in the various photos that we have presented, the cords. Bands are normal, cords are not. Now if a patient has knuckle pads, which we show over here in this next picture, that will be associated with a more aggressive disease pattern. Just like letter hose in the feet will be associated more with an aggressive pattern of Dupuytren's disease. Then the question is, what would be the next best approach? I don't think it would be to try another minimal uh, approach, although some people still would go ahead mm -hmm. and, and want to do that because they're afraid of having the, the bigger surgery. My suspicion is that uh, although fasciectomy lasts longer than a minimal approach, um, the people who flunk minimal treatment uh, will be at greater risk for flunking fasciectomy. And so you could actually make the argument to say, well, they flunked this, maybe we should just go to the operation which works uh, the longest, which would be a dermofasciectomy. So mm -hmm. you could make that argument to bypass fasciectomy. Now, not everyone is a candidate for a minimal procedure. And some patients, uh, either by their choice or surgeon's preference, uh, or because they seem to be fairly biologically aggressive, uh, would be reasonable to skip um, minimal approach and instead have fasciectomy be their initial procedure. Now, fasciectomy has a couple advantages over a minimal approach, chiefly being the ability to rearrange the skin. And when someone has tight skin or skin involvement, uh, you can't always correct that with a minimal procedure. And so fasciectomy allows you to functionally lengthen the skin through one or two approaches. One is uh, by doing uh, Z-plasties or other type of tissue rearrangements to anatomically rearrange the skin. And uh, that's a, a lengthening plastic surgical procedure that uh, can bring skin into an area where it's been physically shortened before the procedure. Okay. There's another approach which is to make uh, a number of transverse incisions and remove the fascia underneath these transverse incisions and then leave them open or leave portions of them open. And that popularly is known as the McCash technique, but actually it's been around a long time before McCash described it. Now what happens with the McCash technique is you don't remove any skin, you don't add any skin, but you leave with big holes in the, in the skin because you haven't closed the wounds. Now this requires that the patient is able to take care of the wound afterwards, so that's a requirement of that surgery.